Amen. Praise God. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? How many of you not glad? But it, never mind. But anyway, don't answer me, please. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to begin reading with verse 13 of this chapter. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Solomon has dedicated the new temple. Solomon has prayed and asked God to fasten his eyes upon the new temple. It was a temple that David wanted to build, but because he was a man of bloodshed, God did not allow him to build the temple. But David furnished all the supplies. So Solomon, in his wisdom, with God's guidance, built one of the most magnificent, most incredible temples this world has ever known. In fact, there has been none like it ever in the history of mankind, the temple that Solomon built for the Lord. And he had prayed that God would bless that house and that God would do great things in the house, in that temple in Jerusalem. And God comes to Solomon in the middle of the night after he had prayed. I mean, no, God had come to you sometimes in the night. And God came to Solomon in the middle of the night, and in verse 13, God says, If I shut up heaven, and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence upon or among my people, if my people which are called by my name, that's Israel, Jacob, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. I want to draw your attention to verse 15. God says, now mine eyes shall be open upon this place. I want to use for a subject this morning, the eyes of God. You may be seated. The eyes of God. When I think about the eyes of God, I understand that God is knowledgeable about everything. God sees everything. In fact, you have God's attention right now. And when I think about the eyes of God, and someone will say, well, God don't have eyes. Well, I beg your pardon. Actually, I don't. I care less whether you're offended or not. God does have eyes. Yeah, but he don't have eyes like us. You know, eyes, sockets, and flesh. Yes, he did. His name's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came, God robed in flesh, and he did, and he does have eyes. In fact, those eyes are so glorified, according to Revelation chapter 1, his eyes are as a fire. Such a powerful, piercing view that God has. And so God says to Israel, David wanted to make him a house, and God said to Israel, says to Solomon in the night, he said, okay, you got my attention. And I will see to it that my eyes are upon this great temple. I will keep my ear open to the ground, listening to the rumbling of the needs of the nation. I will keep my name there perpetually, and I will listen, and my heart will be there, and my name will be praised in this house. It will be there perpetually. And so God gives them a warning. He said, now look, if pestilence come, if 
famine comes, if great upheavings come upon the land. And now he's talking to Israel. Let's don't get it mixed up. He's not talking to the church. He's talking to Israel. And he said, if you'll keep your focus on me. He said, if I send pestilence and send drought upon the land and there's things going wrong. He said, if you'll humble yourselves, if you'll, if you'll call by my name, call by Jacob, Israel. If you'll humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, number one, forgive your sins, number two, and heal your land, number three. I'll forgive your sins, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'll hear from heaven, the Father of all creation. I will heal your land, the Spirit of God. I have touched on this before, and, and I just want to say again, it's a, it's a great evangelistic sermon for revival. But please hear me, this verse is not given to us for a certain revival as an individual, but as a nation. And if a nation is crumbling, a nation is falling apart, it will take a group effort of the nation to assemble themselves together, to humble themselves, to pray, to seek God's face, to turn from their wicked ways. The, the Bible says, if you forsake your sin, turn from your wicked ways, God will hear from heaven. Forgive your sins and heal your land. The only problem with that is, um, with America, it, it is highly unlikely that the whole nation of America will turn, humble, seek, and pray, and turn from their wicked ways and turn to God. It's very unlikely. It would be great if it happened that way, but it's very unlikely. Right now, there is a demonic activity between evil and good. Right now, there's a... Uh, onslaught of principalities and powers. There's fallen angels and I believe good angels in battle right now in the atmosphere above us. I believe there is a great spiritual uh, satanic attack upon the world because if America crumbles, the world crumbles. If America plunges into darkness, the whole world plunges into darkness. And so... It would be great if America would turn, seek, pray, seek God's face, turn from the wicked ways. But I think you'd be doing well to get half of America to do that. I believe it would be a miracle if half of them would do that and say, yeah, but he said that people were to call by my name. He, once again, he's talking to a nation. And if this nation is ever going to have God back in it in full Control, we've got to turn as a nation, not as just a group of people. A turn as a nation. Now, God can, and there could be another uh, reformation. There could be another great outpouring of revival in the land, and that would be tremendous. I vote yes. No for new taxes, yes for reformation and revival. Amen. I'm James Jenkins, and I've approved this message, by the way. But listen to me very carefully, because this nation is in a horrendous, horrific mess. It is in just as much turmoil as it was in the 60s. In fact, I believe the climax and the... Uh, the despair and the idiocracy, the crazy things that's happening in the world today. I mean, this has been a crazy 2020. How many would agree this has been crazy? Insane. The next thing we'll hear from the media is aliens have just landed in San Francisco. I got news for them. They've been there all along. But anyway... <laughs> and if this is live streaming to San Francisco, I do not apologize. I've been there before. But Solomon 
is talking about and he's praying. And let me share with you a little bit of his prayer. God's eye is looking over his house. Did you hear me? God's eye is looking over his house. What if I was to tell you his house is not the temple in Jerusalem and his house is not this church house? What if I was to tell you that God's house is the whole universe? Everything is God's house. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also me and my Father's house are many mansions. This whole universe, this whole creation is God's house. And God has his eyes on this whole universe. There's not an asteroid passes by this planet that God doesn't buffer and shield away. I know nothing about football. I've never watched football. I used to go football games because the girls were pretty. But I knew nothing about football. I still know nothing about football. But I'm told that all the big planets are lined up in the backside of planet Earth. And most of the asteroids come from the big planets. And those big planets buffer and keep the, the asteroids from hitting the Earth. Like football players. Hold them back. I don't know what you call them, but anyway, you know, the big fat guys that are strong, <laughs> that wears sleepers and chases after a blowed up pig in the field. I, and I made some of you really mad already, but that's okay. I'm going to finish my sermon, like it or not. But God knows everything. He knows about the little tadpole in the pond. He knows about the little larva that's going to produce a small insect in a stagnant water. He knows about the invisible virus, the invisible germs. He knows about the unseen and the seen. He knows about everything. God's eyes are upon the whole universe. And if His eyes are on the whole universe, here's what Solomon prayed in verse 27 of 1 Kings chapter 8, Solomon is praying and he says to God, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built. So Solomon knew that God, the house that he built, could not hold God. He says again in verse 29 of 1 Kings, same chapter 8, that thine eyes may be open toward this house day and night, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, and thou mayest hearken unto the prayer that thy servants shall make toward this place. You see, I believe God sees everything. God's eyes are penetrating. He not only sees what you're wearing, He sees you that is wearing it. He not only sees you, He sees your past, He sees your today, He sees your tomorrow, and God sees what you want to be. God knows the intent of your heart. He knows everything. God's eyes are open. And I can't for one second believe that God doesn't know what's going on down here. Hey, me, Lord, hey God, it's a mess down here. I don't believe for one millisecond God doesn't know that the United States of America, its cities are burning its property is being destroyed. People are being killed. The innocent are being killed. There's murder. There's unrest. I don't think for a millisecond that God doesn't see that. God's eyes see everything. He knows what has happened. He knows what has triggered some of the unrest in our nation today. And I wouldn't be a good preacher if I didn't deal with this. And, and honestly, I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. I'm going to let God hold the end of it. But anyway. 
But what happened to George Floyd was a travesty. It was a demonic, careless, evil, wicked murder. I believe that. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. You can look and see what happened. You can hear his cry for mercy. And I have to say there's nothing you can say about that except it is demon. It is demonic. It is evil. It is wicked and it's vile. But I want you to remember that the man that killed George Floyd just happened to be white. I want you to remember that the man who mercilessly and very evil and wickedly killed George Floyd just happened to be a policeman. And I'm going to say some things that needs to be said because God sees this mess and we're being lied to. The media's lying to us. The news reporters are lying to us. The politicians are lying to us. The racist people are lying to us. There's lies everywhere. And I want to say this, yes, black lives matter, white lives matter. Jesus Christ says all lives matter. And I say with great conviction, black lives do matter, and they matter immensely. And so, I want to say this, and I want to go negative a little way, and, and please follow my drift. All lives matter too. And the demons are lying to us. The media's lying, Hollywood's lying, news reporters are lying, those that have personal interests, politicians are lying, those that have deep ingrained racism in their hearts are, li are lying. There's demonic lies everywhere. But let me begin by saying racism is not a color. And racism is not black and white. Racism is evil and wickedness in the heart of haters. Racism is in people that want to be superior to others. Racism is in troublemakers. And it's not, it doesn't come in one color fits all. Racism exists in dirty, wicked hearts all over the world. Amen. And the man who killed George Floyd was a bad man, an evil man. And he just happened to be white. What he did was evil and wicked and he just happened to be a policeman. But I remind you that there are black policemen dying because of the racism. I remind you that innocent people are losing all their stuff because someone has played the race card to cause lies and deception in our land. And they've taken a wound that should have never been. They've taken a, a, a travesty that the United States of America was guilty of long ago. And they've taken that and they've pulled the wounds and they've tried to infest the hurts. But I'll remind you that in the Civil War, there was just as many white and black fought on both sides. Because it was not a skin color, it was a condition of people wanting to dominate and be superior and control other people's lives. And that's wicked and it's evil and it is racism. I wouldn't want to, you know, I, I, I wouldn't even deal with this, but the Lord said, you're going to deal with it. And I am dealing with it. And I want you to know that racism is not one color. It's colors of all kinds. Racism is not the color of skin. 
It's what's embedded in deep in the bedrock of man's heart. And until that's fixed, it'll never be fixed. I bring your attention to the nation of Israel. The Jewish people have been slaughtered and hated due to racism. I bring your attention to the American Indian that was slaughtered and we took their land due to racism. But you listen to me. Not a one of us indulged in that. And I refuse to indulge in that in my heart and my mind. And I know that God has seen this stuff. And I know that it could get worse depending on the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If He's about to come at any moment, it will get worse. It's not going to get better. If God has chosen this to be the climax of the end, then it will get worse. It will not get better. But you please hear me. God's eyes are open. And He is not looking for skin color. He's looking for heart. He's looking for people that love Him and people that need Him and the people that will love their brother as their self. God is looking for people that's humble, that will seek His face, that will turn from their wicked ways. God is looking for people. God's eyes are open and He sees deep. And God sees the hurt in your heart. God sees the trouble and the confusion in your mind. God sees the fear that's wrapped around your life. God sees the fear and the war, uh, fear mongering that's been upon the United States of America. I don't doubt this virus is real. Many died uh, of horrific death in New York and Italy and, and, and of course in China and other places. I don't doubt that this virus is just as real. It's just as serious as a heart attack. It's horrific. It's, it, it, it is detestable. But I'll remind you uh, that we have seen uh, 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 attack after attack. First, it was the impeachment that fell flat on its face. Then it was the uh, the uh, uh, deep state uh, and those that are uh, breaking the law and there's no justice and no one paying for breaking the law. Then it was the virus. Then it was the uh, now it's the, the the havoc in the streets and the uh, and the race card being drawn on people and innocent people are dying because of an old wound that America should have should have never had but and we're embarrassed about it but there's not a person in this room served during that time there's not a person that, by the way my wife's grandfather fought in the civil war what am I saying my wife's old no her daddy married old and even married an old man and her, his dad, fought in the Civil War. Okay, which side? Does it matter? There was good people on both sides. Does it matter? We were more Christian in a Civil War than we are now in a riot. And more prayers. That's why I'm against tearing down statues. Why don't they start by tearing down the naked ladies and leave the others alone? Modern art. Hello. I'm against tearing down the Texas Ranger Monument statue, Love Airfield, in Dallas, Texas. I'm against tearing down statues and breaking tombstones and tearing up monuments of the past. It's our history. It's not all a pretty history, but it's our history. It's not all a good history, but it's our history. And black and white, red and yellow fought to, on both sides. And I don't think we should tear things apart because some politician wants to get us to point swords at each other. 
Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Amen. Hello? Say, preacher, you picking sides? I'm not picking sides. I'm telling you that we're being lied to by a bunch of demons. Hello? I'm not picking sides. I'm going to tell you that you have the, this, this, this turbulence. In there. And by the way, it wouldn't surprise me the next thing on the agenda is UFOs. They did mention it. There's a reason they mention it. If, they, if we can't get us to kill each other, we'll get us to all freak out because something's coming from another world. Well, there is something coming from another world, and His name's Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, and we're going to serve Him and honor Him and praise His mighty name. Amen. My son Galen brought this out, and this can only come from, I think Galen listens to people that wear tinfoil hats sometimes. But that's all right. They're fun to listen to, aren't they, Galen? They're really fun to listen. And the sad thing is they may be right. But anyway, but uh, some believe that because of the days of Noah, Jesus Christ said it would be as the days of Noah. Some believe that giants are going to show up because they were giants in the land in the days of Noah. I don't know what that's going to happen. I know this. If one shows up, I'm going to say, yes, sir. But I'm not going to bow to him. You say, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous? Have you read Revelation? Angels are going to show up. Ridiculous? God's going to open heaven like a scroll. And people are going to look up and see Jesus on his throne. Angels are going to fly there. You say, that's strange. Not as strange as what we're seeing now. The last I heard, the murder... Hornet packed its bags and went back to China. You know, there's always something going on. And God sees this. God knows that, that sheep are easily startled. God knows that sheep are easily upset. And the devil knows that too. So the more... They say, stay at home order. The more they say, don't congregate at church. The more they say, don't, don't do this and don't do that. The more you ought to congregate among the flock. Because this is the safety place where the Lord is my shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. No matter what comes our way. Yea, though we walk to the valley of the shadow of death. We'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Listen to me carefully. God's eyes are upon us. The eyes of God are penetrating. And the eyes of God has this covered. I believe God could say to you, I've got this. I've got this. And I believe that's why God told me to preach this message today. I believe God is trying to say to us as a church, I've got this. God's got this. I posted on Facebook last night that the sheriff of the county is our Last line of defense. It, it, the sheriff and the sheriff's department is our backup. Because the sheriff's department does not answer to the mayor or the governor. They protect the people. No, po no politics involved except running for that office. Judges used to be voted for. I used to hear people say, well, why do you vote for a judge? You don't know him. Well, if you vote for him, then they're not controlled by somebody of higher power. And our, our um, founders, those that were preparing this great land, this United States of America. By the way, I posted that. It wasn't 10 minutes. Our sheriff of Christian County, Brad Cole, sent word to me over Facebook, said, you're exactly right, sir. Thank you. Now, I want you to know 
that our founders had it set up that the sheriff could produce a militia or produce a posse back then in the wild days. So we do have backup. But who needs them? We've got God. Amen. Amen. Really, who needs them? Well, I tell you, those that don't trust God needs them. And so I want you to know, some people say, well, we'll do away with all the police. We'll just get rid of them. What was it? Minneapolis said they'd get rid of all the police. I don't know about you, but I keep the speed limit, well, sort of. Because one of them guys are going to pull out and sort of pull me over. And if it wasn't for policemen, my car would go way faster than it normally does. Now, I wouldn't steal anything. I wouldn't rob anything because God's in me. But what do you think people that there's no punishment? They're going to do what they're doing in big cities. They're looting, they're killing, they're destroying. And by the way, that's not a skin color either. That's a filthy, wicked heart in a person, whether they're white, black, red, or yellow. Yeah. Springfield chose to set off some, uh, designate some roads for protesters to go on, which I think was a great idea. The only problem with that is protesters don't want an empty street. They want to stop traffic. It's no fun if you don't back up the interstate for 50 to 100 miles. And who doesn't want to back Chuck Krauss up? I know I wouldn't get out on the highway with Chuck coming down the road. Because he'll probably be going down the road going, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, and his eyes closed. <laughs> and the Lord would say, you're coming home, son. You're coming home. <laughs> Chuck's a, a truck driver. He's my buddy. Amen. Chuck's a good friend. Been friend for years. He's probably not a friend anymore, but he's been good friend for years. <laughs> But I want everybody to understand where I stand as a preacher. It bothers me that there is racism. But the cure is not pointing swords at each other. And the cure is not finding fault with each other. The cure is obeying the Lord, obeying God. Trusting God, loving people, caring about people. No hate. Amen? No hate. No unforgiveness. Amen? And so God's eyes, God's eyes are watching. And if He chooses to settle everything and smooth everything out, glory to God. But if he chooses not, Lord, I'm coming home. Amen. It isn't like Jesus didn't tell us there would be days like this. Jesus did tell us. Amen. So if you didn't get anything out of my sermon but this one thing. Racism is not a color. It's the wickedness and the sinfulness in man's heart. And we need to remember that. Amen? We need to remember that. What do you think should be done? Well, I'm not the judge and juror. I'm not going to be judge and juror on what has happened. But I will say this. What I saw was demonic. It was evil. 
And I've not seen that demon stop yet. It's still going. There's unrest everywhere. We're being lied to. We're being played. We're being played. And I believe the flu, the virus was real. But I'm going to say this. What better place to be than in the church of Jesus Christ? And this fall, they're going to do the same thing they did this spring. They're going to do the same thing this fall. Shut them down. We ain't shutting this place down until they're hauling people out by ambulances here. And that ain't going to happen. Amen. The media spins everything. Like this one guy got shot with a rubber bullet in the eye. And they showed a picture of this poor protester got shot, innocent bystander, just protesting. He got shot in the eye, and his eye all banged up. And so they showed a picture of him before and after. And they had his eye all bandaged up. Only problem, wrong eye. <laughs> you, can't believe, uh, you can't believe all this stuff. You can't believe everything you see. Amen? Like they were showing all the people dying, having body bags in New York or somewhere where it was. And they had this girl, just a young lady about the size of Chris, or just a little thing. And she's got this body bag of a loved one she's picked up and she's carrying him off. I said, yeah. You ever heard of dead weight? A little girl's not going to pick up a dead body in a body bag and pick it up and... Hello? They're spinning this. Everybody's trying to make it big and, and, and out of whack. And they're lying to us. Listen to me. You've got one thing to believe, and that is the Lord God Almighty, His Word... Trust Him. Love your neighbor as yourself. Serve your God. Don't listen to a bunch of nonsense. Trust the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And keep peace in your heart. And just be smart. Amen. Now. When you get together and you go to trying to bash the leader of any country. And I, you know, I, a few years ago, President Obama, I, I wasn't for people making up things about him. I wasn't for people bashing him. He's our president. For the Lord's sake, treat the office with respect. And the same thing goes for our President Trump, our president now. Just pray and just ask the Lord to protect him and take care of him. He's got a heavy load. Say, but he makes the wrong decisions. Yeah, they're, but they're his to make. It's our job to pray. And I don't like it when people try to bash other preachers. Now, I'm going to lose friends here. But I am going to influence enemies. You know, make friends, influence. Anyway, never mind. I'm getting this George Bush spell going on. Can't forget. Can't remember. And by the way, I like that guy. Kind of goofy, but I like him a lot. Now I'm going to really get you mad. Listen to me. It is important that we learn to respect each other. And even if we disagree, we need to walk in the love of Christ. We need to let the Lord lead us. And, and as for preachers, they're not your enemy because they make lots of money. Don't beat them up because they got a lot of money. That's why I'm not telling you I have millions. You wouldn't like me and you tell lies about me. Well, I don't have millions, but if I did, I wouldn't tell you, because you'd want a loan after the service. <laughs> now, please hear me. 
I preach against false doctrine. I preach against error. But I'm not going to assassinate another man with words or criticism. You think what you want to think about Joel Osteen. But that guy gets bashed more than any preacher I ever saw. Now, I don't agree with what he preaches from time to time, but at least he is talking about Jesus. And there are some churches don't even do that. And he does a good talk. And if he don't cover the areas that I think he ought to cover, then I will, as I am this morning. But I'm not going to beat him up. I'm not going to put him down. And we need to quit that. We need to quit putting people down. We need to be careful that we're people of love and consideration. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know where they're at. You don't know their mindset. But I do know right and wrong, and I'm going to stand up about that. And I just wanted to make very clear that racism is not one color. In fact, it's not a color at all. It's a bad, ugly spirit in the heart of man. And so I just wanted to deal with that. Now, I'm sure that some of you have your own feelings about it. And maybe you don't have the same convictions I do. But as the pastor of this church, I told you where I stand. And I'm thankful for every person that attends this church. And I don't care where you've come from. I don't even care where you're at. Don't, I do care about where you're going. And every person in this room... I love you and care for you. And I may say things that hurt you or troubles you. But you will never walk out of here saying, Pastor Atkins didn't say what he felt was right. And I have said it. And I will continue to say it. Look at the nation. Of, look, at, look at the Jews. Look at them. Just look at them. Hitler. Mussolini, millions of Jews killed in gas chambers. Mothers and children shot in the head because a man thought that the Jews was an inferior race. We don't need that kind of stuff, not in the United States of America. And we don't need that kind of stuff anywhere on planet Earth. We need King Jesus, the Lord and Savior of all, to return and to clean up and to mop up this mess. Amen. Amen. You have it among the Arabs and the, and the Jews. You have it among Shiites and what's the other one? I can't remember their name. But anyway, you have this racism. But it's not the color of skin. It's one wanting to be superior over the other. That's all it is. It's egotism, wickedness, and evil. And we need to put our swords down. And we need to pull our Bibles up and say, God bless you, brother and sister. We're going home someday. And there won't be no skin color there. Amen. But there may be. It may be just the color you didn't care for. Amen? Hello? I think we'll be shining so bright. It won't, you, won't, you won't be able to wash our smile off. You won't even be able to slap our smile off, Daryl. We'll be so happy. Stand with me. We're going to give an invitation. I preached a little bit longer and maybe a little bit harder. But as you can tell, my blood's a boiling. I'm mad. I'm mad that we're being lied to. I'm mad that demons are lying to us. 
Hollywood's lying to us. Politicians are lying to us. Masses are lying to us. Reporters are lying to us. Demons are lying to us. And every lie matters. Every lie matters. And we need to serve the Lord. Amen. Josh going to bring a song. We're glad you came. This is probably not the most perfect setting for an altar call, but we're going to give one anyway. Amen. Did you know like racism, there's religious-ism. Baptists are mad at the Pentecost, and Pentecost are mad at the Methodists. Come on, folks. Our God's bigger than that. Come on, folks. Jesus is an incredible God. And we don't care what's above the door. We just want to know what's in the heart. And we want to know that Jesus is honored in every service. That's what we want. Well, we're glad you came. We appreciate everybody. Don't be discouraged. The lies are the lies. Focus on Jesus. God sees it all. And everything's going to be all right in my Father's house. He sees it all. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming.